I dropped off Ellie, paid the ten dollars to have her in the kennel, and uh, then I got some lunch. You had a fourteen dollar meal right here. I wanted to get something healthy, healthy, so I got steamed vegetables on the side. Oh, beautiful guys! Wow. Only thing allowed in your mouth is water in the cave. Get it out. Head to the cave and whisper. Oh, there it is. There's the cave opening there. That is breathtaking. All the cactus up on the cave like that. Oh my god, look how huge that cave opening is. That's where we go. Oh, look at that. There's a nice fresh breeze. It's very cool. It smells like poop. Like probably bad, like guano or something. God, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but all these switch backs and then it goes right into the mouth of the cave. It's gonna swallow me. Oh my god, can you see that? There's all these bats that are flying in the cave right now. Oh my god, cool. They're tiny little miniature things too. Some of the uh, cave walls here. Uh, can you guys see and hear that? Unfortunately, you can't smell it. It smells like shit. That's where we're going, right down there. Phenomenal experience. Like, I think everybody needs to try this at least one time in their life. And I haven't even gotten that far in the cave yet. And uh, yeah, I've got my pulsating headlamp on just because I'm a dork. Let me see if I can illuminate it a little bit. Nope, that's not happening. This is gonna be a pretty boring video. I think these are called stalactites. Yeah. The summer home of thousands of Mexican free-tailed bats. The bats roost here from March to October. During the day, the bats hang by their feet from the ceiling to create a cluster. At sunset, they stream out past the point to hunt for flying insects. Guano, that's what I'm smelling, has accumulated on the floor of Bat Cave to the depths of more than 40 feet. Mining at this valuable fertilizer the early 1900s led to the exploration of Carl's Bad Cave. These are just phenomenal sights, guys. I cannot believe I'm here. This seems like it's an uh, Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I can't even describe to you how cool that looks. There's like a mist that's coming up from the cave entrance, and you can see the people hiking down. Just the texture of the erosion there, what it's done to the side of this uh, cave entrance. Oh my god, I'm going into p the pitch black right now. This is like that movie, Pitch Black. Oh my god, this is scary. There's gonna be some <laughs> alien jump out and grab me and eat me. <sighs> Where's Vin Diesel when you need him? Another cathedral area here. They've done a remarkable job lighting the cave. Just the placement of the lights. For instance, look right here, can you see this? This water right here, how it's rippling, the ripple effect. They place the light just right. Look at that. That is amazing. The Devil's Spring, it's not actually a spring. It's a pool in the limestone cavity fed only by dripping water. Like the other cave pools, no streams flow into the Devil's Spring. Contaminants cannot be washed away. Oh my God, you guys cannot see this in the, in the camera here, but Oh my god, there's just this fog that we're walking down into as we descend further into the cave. Wow, it's so, there's so much moisture in the air. I thought vans had a problem with moisture. Can you imagine living in a cave? Don't even want, waste your time imagining it. That's a stupid idea. Just the sheer size, the magnitude, of this, just the size of this cave. Weather on the surface changes according to the time of day and the seasons, but as you descend deeper into the cave, the conditions stabilize. The temperature of the air surrounding the rock here remains at about 56 degrees with relative humidity. About 90 degrees humidity. We are basically taking a steam shower right now. Nice, cool, cold. Farther and farther as we go. I do see a light down there. Can you see it? Let's have a look up at the cave. I'm gonna aim the camera upward. So you can see the, the roof here. I'm in the cave. Unfortunately, the camera is not picking it up. So that just means that you guys have to come and see it for yourself, guys. The most awesome hike that you've ever been on. Now picture that completely underground with a very cool breeze and the smell of guano. Look at that. Looks like coral almost. Yeah, it looked like coral that you'd see in, uh, if you were like snorkeling in Hawaii or something like that. Ooh, hope you guys aren't claustrophobic. Can you see this? Oh man, you really have to like duck down to get through this, which is pretty amazing considering we were just in uh, something that was a couple hundred feet 
high, you know, the ceiling was like really far up. Here we are, uh, there's another huge opening right here in the cave. I would say this is definitely just a moderate hike. It's all paved and there's railing. And as you can hear, wow, the kid crying. Uh, kids can make it just fine over here. Try to zoom in, looking downward. stone wall ahead you can see a series of vertical cracks called joints. Joints such as these are made from cavern development possible. Seeping groundwater, weak carbonic acid permeated the joints and dissolved portions of the limestone into small cavities along the joints. This chemical process is called solutioning. Hydrogen sulfide gas bubbled up from the deep oil and gas deposits. Combining with water, it formed corrosive sulfuric acid which further dissolved the limestone cavities to form large passages like the one you're in. Right now, guys, you're in it with me. These are really cool formations up ahead. They just look like two leaning towers, like Siamese twins. Let me see if I can get a better look. Look at it, guys. Look at it. Would you just look at it? Come on, guys, look at it. Wow, look at it. Here's the second one. Wow. But it just keeps going down and down and down. Some seating over here, so they can do um, probably when you do the ranger uh, guided tours, probably sitting down right here. And this is what you have as a backdrop as he educates you on the formation of this cave. Imagine the tremendous rubble when the iceberg rock broke loose from the cavern wall here and fell on the floor below. The iceberg rock and other breakdown blocks fell from the walls and the ceilings after the acidic water that formed the cavern drained away. Only the tip of the iceberg rock is visible from here. Farther down the trail, you'll walk around the base of this 200,000 ton giant. One of those things that you have to check out in your lifetime. Have a look at that texture. Ooh, sexy texture. But don't touch it. Not allowed to touch the cave walls. Only sulfuric acid is allowed to touch those walls, not your dirty hands. Alright, look at this. There's some uh, little entrance here. Or little tiny uh, cave here. I see light, light ahead. This is what I mean. I love what they did with the lighting in this place. It's probably like overrepresented right now because it's uh, so dark in here. Lights and other cave deposits made chiefly of calcite are called decorations or splethiums. Splethiums form with groundwater containing calcium bicarbonate solution and when it seeps into the cave. When the solution becomes exposed to the cave air, carbon dioxide gas is released, and calcite is deposited. Soda straws are thin yellow stalactites formed by dripping water. And that's what it's talking about right there. Stalactites, stalagmites, and spelithiums. <laughs> National attraction in the 1920s. In the early days, however, there were no elevators or paved trails, and the lighting was primitive. A completed guided tour in the 1920s took five hours. Today, with elevators, modern lights, and self-guiding trails, you can see more than the cave in half the time. It just seems like there's always something new to see here. This is, uh, looks like algae, you know? You can't really describe it any other way. Like algae attached to rocks, like you would see in the ocean. Rounded hole there. So I'll just uh, let the footage roll so you can see what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> well, check this out, guys. Ooh, yeah. The roof is lowering. Hope you're not claustrophobic. There you go. There's more things to see here. Oh, pitch black. There we go. I can see more light. Light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of the best dad jokes, but I'm not even a dad. Oh wow, look at this. This is called the Boneyard. Notice how the limestone here is riddled with holes like Swiss cheese. The explorers named this place the Boneyard because the rounded shapes of the rocks reminded them of old bones. <laughs> when the cave was developing weakly acidic groundwater, permeated cracks or joints in the limestone. Many holes formed where acid dissolved the rocks. After the cave drain, there must have been little dripping water here because the few stalactites or the Blethiums formed. I can't say that word. 
Here, the boneyard acidic groundwater dissolved in a matrix of holes along the joints. Traces of joints are still visible. Oh, to this day. I think we need to get some zoom in action. Wow. You see all those like little holes in there? Looks like a uh, calcium deficient bone, osteoporosis. Dun, 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 dun. Amazing. Amazing. <gasps> amazing. <gasps> More amazing! I seriously can't believe it only took me $10 to enter this cave and like $300 in gas, but it's still worth it. Yeah, it looks like I have a few options ahead of me. Um, I've heard that the big room connects here. That's the other large cave. So I'm not gonna go to the rest stop. I'm not gonna return home. Do not pass go. We're gonna go to the big room. It feels like there's more to see in the big room. Like there's just so much to look at. Stalactites, stalagmites, spolethians. Still can't pronounce it. Whoa, don't fall down there. That looks like an alien world. Wow, yeah, I mean, you don't have to see the natural entrance. This is pretty phenomenal in itself. However, there seems to be a lot more kids in here and they like to walk slow. Oh, look at that. Lion's tail, stalactite, and popcorn. <laughs> That's what we're looking at here. Mmm, sounds delicious. Oh my god, this is what you see in like National Geographic magazines. Would you look at that? Dang. A lot of my videos, I uh, needlessly have my headlamp on. And I would say that this is the right time to have it on. Oh my god, yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but this looks like something out of the movie Alien right here. <laughs> Jeez, I should have brought a lot brighter light. That's the one thing I regret. Ooh, let me do the shaky thing so you can see it. No, it doesn't pick up. Oh my god, this looks like in the movie Alien when they have all those little pods and of uh, the babies, you know, and they're about to hatch. That scene where they actually hatch. Can you see that? That's what it looks like, right? That's what I'm seeing. Oh my god, looks like an alien planet. You know, like, why do we need to explore the solar system when we've got so much to explore here in, in caves in the depths of the ocean? This is an alien world right here on our own planet. And that's just looking back where we came from. This is the Temple of the Sun. There's columns, stalactites, and stalagmites. And that other one that I can't pronounce. I just can't get over the fact that this is all created through nature, you know? Like this, it looks like it was uh, on the prop, you know, it's like a prop in a movie set or something. <laughs> I really feel like I'm at Universal Studios, you know, and they're about to film a new uh, Fox movie or something, you know? Oh, come on, that is crazy cool looking. That, how can that be natural? That's amazing. We we'll zoom in here, the beast of the belly. Hmm. Walk backwards. Awesome. Here's a map of where we are right now. So I gotta go all the way around, and it looks like there's a shortcut right here. Shortcuts are for sissies. No way. I want to see it all in its glory. I don't care, man. I'm gonna touch it. I can't. I can't help myself. This is too cool looking. Okay. I realize where I've seen this. Yes, this was a. Uh, it was a Matrix Two, the second one when they had that party in the, in the uh, cave in Zion. Cool, here's something that you guys can actually see. It's too bad that the lighting is so poor. It's actually too bad that I didn't bring in adequate lighting. I should have brought in one of those like LED torches. Those cray LED bulbs. Here's another view. Do a nice little pan. Jeez, I'm giving all the good stuff away. You guys don't even need to come now. It's pitch dark right now. 
But can you guys hear that? The dripping water? You're walking in this dark area right here, and then you're presented with this, this glorious view is what I should say. Look at that. It's green. Looks all like an alien world. Told you, this is the alien movie. Oh my god, this is looking down. There's like a little ladder that goes down there, rope ladder. Do not want to drop my cell phone right now. The wire ladder below was installed in 1924 during a six month exploration and survey sponsored by National Geographic Society. Built by Jim White, a cave guide, the, later the ladder descended 90 feet from the lower cave. Explorers felt uneasy dangling in this dark pit in the swaying ladder. Its value established by explorers and scientists, Carlsbad Cavern became a national monument in 1923 and national park in 1930. This 90-foot high balcony named the Jumping Off Place overlooks the southern entrance of the lower cave. Lower cave is an undeveloped section of the Carlsbad Cavern consisting of more than one mile of surveyed passages. Lower cave and other undeveloped passages are being preserved in their natural state for scientific study. New passages and rooms are still being discovered today. <laughs> oh my god, water's dripping down and just dripped on my camera. The rock in front of you is the hydrated calcium sulfite or gypsum deposited here. It measures up to 15 feet thick. When exposed to acidic water, gypsum dissolves easily. Note the vertical holes drilled by dri dripping water. Deposits are best preserved in dry locations. Now you can see this is where the water is dripped for the sulfuric acid. <laughs> awesome. If I fart in the cave, where do my farts go? Will they stay here, preserved for thousands of years? Or will I just stink up the path for the next person behind me? They have light bulbs over there. That's the one thing that I wish I brought. Brighter lights. I bet you guys wish that's what I brought also. Just means that you guys have to come and see it for yourselves. My mouth is gaping open right now. That is really, really beautiful. <laughs> Can't believe that that's just naturally created. Come on, that is something out of a movie right there.
Purpose room, the King's Palace. This is the lower king. Natural entrance, and that's where I started. I will share my knowledge of these special places with my Let's see how Ellie's holding up here. Oh good, she's nice and calm. You resting Ellie? Trust me, you'd rather be in here than out in the car. It's hot out there, huh? Hi Ellie. Alright. Still here. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, sorry that it was so dark, but it was really difficult to film in those conditions. Next time I'll bring a light. Uh, I'd just like to tell you guys, Carlsbad Cavern was an experience uh, that everyone should uh, go through in their lifetime. So definitely make a trip out to Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Thanks for watching, guys. And again, please give it a thumbs up and uh, also share my videos. I don't have many subscribers, so um, I spend a lot of time on these videos. So hopefully uh, you guys can get the word out and I can get more subscribers. Hey guys, I didn't have enough money to get Ellie out of that kennel, so they ended up putting me in a kennel. Can you guys please send some monies to help me get out of here? Please, send me the money! Thanks for watching guys, get out there and live the dream, LTD.